What is up, Work here, and today we're going to be checking out a Spires of Ascension plus 11 on my Vengeance Demon Hunter, and I'm going to commentate some of the things that are very unique to Vengeance Demon Hunter tanks that change the way that you do the pulls compared to my Protection Paladin. So, we're going to start off by pooling some energy. We're going to do the Blood Elf Racial into Immolation Aura. Gives me a little bit of fury. You cannot Immolation Aura in here. I don't know what's going on. I'm sorry, you cannot jump in here. Always screws me up. We are going to go into Fell Devastation to smooth this out. We're going to um, take a big damage reduction here and a little bit of DPS. However, I'm still losing aggro like crazy, but we're going to pull the mobs out of the Sanguine. Uh, this is our job. This affix this week is about the tank being proactive about Sanguine and the healer just praying that everyone else doesn't take too much unnecessary damage because Grievous is really tough later on uh, if you start falling behind in the healing. And falling behind kind of makes it seem like it's the healer's fault. Really, as I've been noticing it, because I play Protection Paladin main, which is basically a healer, what I basically notice is that like it's people taking unnecessary damage, which I consider not kicking when there's kicks that are available, standing in Sanguine, or getting hit by boss mechanics that really are avoidable, when, but basically people are tunneling is what's happening. So I'm being proactive here about trying to LOS and get people out of Sanguine. People being the ads, <laughs> these guys. So it's taking a little bit longer. And Sanguine is especially messy, uh, in my opinion, when you're trying to do really big pulls. Because again, there's so many casters here that will just love to sit in Sanguine. And we don't have enough kicks to like reliably always get them out. And it's why I don't elect to. Uh, double triple pull in this alleyway spiteful spiteful i'll triple pull if they want to so right now i'm waiting for the healer right um this is something you really have to do uh, it's very like anti-mythic plus to ever just sit there however in this run you'll see i do a lot of sitting there for grievous and for explaining mechanics and um well one i wanted to record this run because i'm testing a couple demon hunter tactics here uh the first was the Blood Elf Racial to Immolation Aura Opener. That is something I try to do every time. You'll see that I have my Blood Elf Racial here now. That's a free 25 uh, Fury. Immolation Aura will then also uh, continue to give me Fury. So the goal is to get to about 25 Fury uh, before I start any pull. I'm not always doing that. I'm trying to practice that. Because if you do that, that means that you can do your opener, which might be like an Imprison to Glaive to Elysian Decree. But then I'll have 25 energy and then it's just one fracture directly into fell devastation. So that's becoming my opener. Um, I don't think, I think I'm too, too flustered here to do it correctly, but let's see. So the first thing is our CC is in prison. Boom. Same as repentance, but instant. Very fast. We're going to glaive pull into Elysian decree. They're going to mostly get inside of it. And now we have enough energy to do fell devastation, which puts me into meta which gives me big damage reduction, a little bit of damage, and on top of that, I'd already also used uh, Fiery Brand. So a lot of mitigation, very tanky for that window. Now we're in what's called the kiting window where we actually do not want to be face tanking. We don't have any mitigation up at all, nothing. No Fiery Brand, no meta. I have some spikes, no fell devastation, but you'll see that we're just going to basically kite until we get that back. So I'm going to run over here in prison lovely and now we're gonna just handle pride by himself no extra mob so this is very similar to how i do it on my protection paladin almost identical but it's a little bit faster just a little tiny bit faster here because i can use imprison which is instant cast so it's a little little itty bit faster nothing massive uh but the real thing we're gonna be checking out in this run is how to handle the invisible cats as a vengeance demon hunter oh man is it overpowered it's great it took me a couple times to figure out how in prison actually works i'm sorry spectral sight works but we'll check that out soon doing a little fell dev this is double damage on both mobs here and um also going to be able to do some damage reduction for overhead slash I'm going to jump over here. This is my new play. Took a little bit of damage on Tyrannical. That would be, I'd probably be half health from eating that much. I'd probably be dead on a Tyrannical or in cheat death. Um, 
for ever having gotten hit by those arrows and by being so uh, basically being in the black line for too long however on a key like this i'm going to jump away right and that keeps the arrow away from uh the boss over there but you really shouldn't take any damage to arrows and you shouldn't take any you shouldn't take much damage i'm going to fly away again keep the spear away you really shouldn't take too much damage from the line like that was a little bit there not too bad but infernal strike does help that out quite a bit there's spear of bastion from our warrior and lovely so now we're gonna go look for the stealthies and here comes spectral sight spectral sight means i can see stealthy so there's where the cats are and if you watch them they're jumping around like crazy i don't know what's going on with them they're very hard to find and get out we're in fell devastation to kind of just keep aggro face tank while i can we have about two more seconds of face tanking gonna try to keep them in the little circle there that must be the that must be hunter wild spirits i'm guessing um kind of look like a kirin ability but no that was, that was probably the wild spirits anyway and thus begun begins the uh, vengeance demon hunter plus sanguine kiting train you gotta kite the whole time so spectral sight again i can see the cats there they are and there it is now I'm in meta right now in my avatar because I'm mad at that, uh, I'm mad at this warlock. This warlock keeps running ahead and I actually have to tell him to stay back because he just messes up my pull. Like the warlock knows that there's invisible cats and he does this a couple times. I'm like, yeah, I know you know they're there, but if, if you pull aggro off them, it's going to make my life harder. So chill. And I tell this group to chill multiple times to stay back and chill. So keep chilling, please. So we're going to finish up these cats here. No big deal. So Spectral Sight, pretty big play. Uh, you're gonna Spectral, in my opinion, you're gonna Spectral Sight, and when you come out of it, you can see little ghosty figures of where the cats are, unless they're like patrolling still. And then you'll be able to drop um, your Flame Sigil on them. I think that's really the best one. I would save Elysian Decree for something else, but uh, Flame Sigil and Spectral Sight come back fast enough that you can do those two uh, stealth things like that. If you're feeling especially spicy, you can try to get them both out, right? Spectral Sight both and drop two sigils or drop a marker for someone to do like a flame strike or something. But just know as a Vengeance Demon Hunter, you pretty much have enough time if you want to just do it one at a time like that. So going to try to bait them into the Elysian Decree. They do. Uh, these ones you want to stay in melee because you actually want them to jump away um, because otherwise they will just sit in the Sanguine. The other thing you can do is bolster kill them, right? So we're moving them out, moving them out of the Sanguine. And we want to just bait them to jump um, not into the Sanguine again, right? So um, works out pretty well. One dies, and again, perfect Sanguine management of some pretty tough mobs. It's actually pretty hard to manage those because they jump quote unquote randomly. I know how they jump now, but it is tricky to try to not have them go into the Sanguine forever. So we have imprisoned and we're going to pull this one back all the way back. Uh, the hunter, unfortunately, chops their wild spirits and they're, they're sad about this later. And the way that I kite this boss is away from the group. So we're just slowly, I think they're out of wild spirits here, but I'm like, well, either I can keep them in wild spirits or and you guys get hit by all the attacks or I can play it safe. I got hit there. <laughs> get to jump back, though. So, sorry, Wild Spirits, that's how I kite it. Uh, if you would, if, you, if this hunter, which they definitely will not ever again, but if it's part, if it's with the people that I play with normally, um, which on this tune, I'm starting to build up a little bit of a horde squad here. Uh, I take Spiders of Ascension the same every single time. You can go watch my other runs of my Paladin. If I roll the Monk or a Bear or a DK or whatever, it doesn't matter. I tank it the same way. I want to CC the same mobs. And um, what I'm showing in this video is the difference in tactics and spells, etc. of a Vengeance Demon Hunter. So far, Spectral Sight is pretty nice. However, uh, because I know where they are, Consecration and Blessed Hammer, they work fine for Protection Paladin 2. This is a little bit more precise. However, what I will say is that... The third pride, which we'll see in a second. Here comes a big whiff, right? Big whiff. Big whiff. Um, completely missed that, and now aggro sideways. This is one of my worst pulls, actually. 
Uh, I'm losing big aggro to this warrior who's doing huge damage. I'm also in meta. Forgot to tell y'all. Not anymore. Um, that was one of my worst pulls because I missed a listening decree. So, check this pull out. Uh, we're gonna Spectral Sight. There's the cat. And then we're going to uh, Flame Sigil. We're gonna jump over, imprison, and then attempt to just take these three. Uh, you can also CC that one, but we're gonna go for it here. Our kicks have not been Omega on point here. I'm gonna go into meta to kind of uh, smooth this out because that was a wonky pull. There was a little bit of aggro mismanagement there, but that's a pretty smooth pull that you can't really do on a protection paladin, right? Uh, getting the stealthy out is almost impossible uh, as a protection paladin without pulling everything else. And trying to repentance the back mob takes forever. That cast time on repentance takes way too long. So being able to get out, reliably know where the cat is, drop a sigil on them, reliably imprison this one before anyone goes ham and starts attacking it, and pull the other three together, that is a pull that would require help, essentially. I would need help to do that pull on, as a protection paladin. And you can go watch my other Spires runs. Doesn't always go that smooth. Again, as a demon hunter, big utility. Not a fan of people running ahead. I tell them not to run ahead. And there we go. There's the cats. It's pretty cool to see them in stealth, right? You know, if you're a paladin, you've never seen such a sight. Uh, I know I was impressed when I first saw that. I was like, wait a minute. I have this stealth ability, this stealth detect ability. I should probably use that. And really the only dungeon that there's stealth, I think this is the only dungeon where there's like stealth mobs, but not only are there stealth mobs, there's a lot. So being a Kyrian Vengeance Demon Hunter in this dungeon is optimal. You can deal with all the cats and your Kyrian, so you get to do all these spears, which is gonna come up pretty, pretty soon over here. So I would say that for Spires of Ascension, I'm gonna have to say that the Vengeance Demon Hunter wins. Kyrian Vengeance Demon Hunter here is pretty OP with the spear, just like a Kyrian Protection Paladin, but the Spectral Sight here is a huge deal. And this is the second hardest pull, if not the hardest pull of the entire dungeon, made trivial by Spectral Sight, so watch. So I'm telling everyone to stay back and I'm especially screaming at this Warlock who's like trying to run ahead. That Warlock knows, like, the Warlock knows there's stealth cats, right? If the stealth cats pounce on him, he's one shot. There they are, there's the boys. Elysian Decree pull, all of them. I got all of them, right? No worries, knew where they were. We're going into Fell Devastation. We're gonna keep aggro here. We're gonna face tank. We have Fiery Brand up. So we have about five to four seconds. We're just gonna run now. I actually had asked for that binding shot um, before we even entered the dungeon, I was asking the hunter, I was like, you running binding shot? He's like, yeah, but I don't know how to use it or where to use it. And I told him like, this is it. I was like, I will tell you beforehand. And you saw me standing on those stairs. I was typing that entire time. This pull is made fairly trivial by the fact that I can reliably tell where the cats are. I can aggro them all at once and then do big, big mitigation to just face tank them for a while. That as a paladin requires the help of someone to get the cats out. So that's a flare from a hunter. Uh, that's a flame strike guess from a mage. And it's a hard pull because it always leads to pride. So again, this pull, as far as ease and finesse, you know, style points, uh, it's gonna get it's gonna go to the Vengeance Demon Hunter uh, again. And it's a pure utility play. It's not the overly tankiness. We have our tankiness windows, but we're not tanky forever, uh, which I will show over and over again as I get KSM on this character. Uh, you're tanky for about eight seconds and then you have to run, okay? Protection Paladin is not quite like that. I tried to sigil, silence sigil, but I miss it by like a half second. But anyway, I told the group to silence him. Anyway, I pulled them and I tried to have him um, walk through the silence sigil, so pre-silence himself. So he would keep walking to us. Had I pulled that off, that would have been pretty slick. However, as a protection paladin, pulling that off is actually really easy. Here is a um, one out of 10 sanguine management on my part. Should have just kept kiting. Uh, as a protection paladin, you just pull with Avenger shield. And then when he's 
casting, you just hit him with Divine Toll, right? And you can see that in my other runs. So that pull for Protection Paladin a little bit easier, actually, I would say. So uh, pull in the triple pack. This one's an issue if no one's kicking. And I'm seeing everyone has their kick available. No one is kicking Dark Clash, right? Four kicks available. I whiffed mine. Uh, still four kicks available. So all this damage, if you're a healer, you're just looking at this in crying, right? I think we've used the Warlock and the Hunter have not kicked a single thing. And on a 14 or 15, we'd be dead, right? So I'm looking at the kick tracker. Um, we're not voice comms, but when I get to 14s on my Vengeance Demon Hunter, uh, if it's my key, I require voice comms just because I like timing. Timing's fun, right? Uh, and I'm really decent at leading groups through it if they listen. Like, it kind of sounds like what you're listening to right here. Like, I know pull for pull, what's going to happen. I, I can look at the comp and be like, okay, mage, I need this. Okay, hunter, I need this. Okay, boomkin, you just be boomkin, right? Rogues, I know what you're going to need to do. Like, I know what all the classes need to do. So voice comps helps a lot. So another pull. Let me just tell you here, uh, this pull goes to the Vengeance Demon Hunter. Okay, there's the stealthy, right? So if you try to trap and you're on the left side, that cat's gonna get you. It's a trap, right? So we trap from the right side, pull him in, Elysian Decree all the friends, and drop the spear. Boom, there it goes. We have Lusted, which I haven't told the hunter to do. We now have every mob except for the last one that's going to uh, be our, our spawn. I'm sorry, our pride control. I think I was in meta for there too. I was just not paying attention. But that's kind of the opening, right? It's a CC into a Glaive, into an Elysian Decree, into Fell Devastation, which is also meta, with Fiery Brand in there off cooldown, and then you Soul Cleave to get your Fiery Brand back, and thus is how I play Vengeance Demon Hunter, right? I don't know why the Warrior went and got him. Um, as you might have seen in some of my other videos, this is an easy one to wipe on especially on Grievous, just this little extra damage here. Uh, some, I kicked that one. I feel like I'm probably the only one doing kicks right now. This is unnecessarily spicy. Um, and at a higher key, with like if you'd done this on a 14, I think people would have died because of Grievous. And are people getting hit by the boast? This is not a high IO group. Like, no offense to them. No offense to them. I'm also not massively high IO yet on this Vengeance Demon Hunter. But that's, that's not it, right? I spent a lot of time-ish eh, trying to keep, uh, you know, that guy CC'd. And don't break my CC's ever. DPS, don't touch the tank CC ever. Just don't do it. Don't assume we're pulling the pack in until I'm done. Like, you don't know the damage profile. You don't... This warrior, I guarantee, has no idea the status of the party. Like, do you... I, gu I guarantee it, no warrior in the world knows what cooldowns the tank has left, right? The healer will, I would hope, but he has no idea if I have meta in the pocket, if I have anything to mitigate this extra damage that he thinks that we're going to live through. Not necessary, not necessary. So don't break the tank CC. Groups that break my CC inspires, because I did three runs of this to get this video recorded. Uh, one of them I left in the middle. And I'm not the kind of guy that leaves in the middle, but they just, they had poo-poo damage, like absolute garbage numbers, like embarrassing numbers, like, like carry me daddy numbers, you know, really bad, embarrassing damage numbers. And they were blaming their spec and being like, oh, I need to change my talents. And I'm like, no, you're doing below tank damage. Like just like leave this dungeon and they're breaking CC. So the person that blames their spec, the person who can't play DPS well, does less damage than the tank. Guess what? Also doesn't understand that like, they're like, oh, I wonder why that mob is in a cage. Let me start smacking it. That, that It's that group. And it was in an 11 too. So 11s are pretty dicey. When we get to the 14, 15s, I've had very few issues with those where it's like, like gross misplays. But over 10 and 11s, it's people who are like, okay, let's try this pride thing out. And they're just actually garbage. So uh, all to say, Getting this recorded for everyone here to show Spectral Sight, to show um, how I'm starting to thread the spells uh, for these pulls here. A lot of fail groups to get this going here. Uh, and this warrior told me that he depleted this key all the way all, all the way from a 14 to an 11 to finally time it. And I was like, 
I was the second person to join. I was like, listen, I'm going to consult on every single person you bring into this group, which I did. And I was like, and I know this route like inside out. And you know, my main is 1300 IO. So he sees that I was like, listen, I know this route backwards inside out. Let's just bring the right classes and we'll be fine. I don't know about a warlock necessarily. I, I have a couple warlock friends. They don't bring anything specifically uh, unique that makes my life easier. But as long as they do the damage, that's fine. This hunter is very new, but has most of the dungeon done pretty well. I'll talk about what happens at the end, however. I told them to dismiss pets, and that's for the hunter and the warlock. Especially the hunter, but also the warlock. Um, DK pets will not aggro. I think warlock pets will. So take that time. Tell the group, right? Gonna run up here in prison very fast. And we're going to sigil pull uh, the angel. And we have to run up on him immediately and kick. And this groups them together. And that's Vengeance Demon Hunter. We don't have Divine Toll. Uh, if you watch my Spires 15 video or any one of those, uh, clutch kick at the end from the Warlock. Thank you so much. Uh, they have a massive cooldown on their kick. Wow. But uh, we don't have two divine. We don't have divine toll to double silence people from range. So you end up having to do a sigil and then just run up on them old school and kick them in the face. <laughs> That's how it works. Uh, we're laughing here because we actually just kill this one through the sanguine. That's because it's an eleven. You're not killing that. I mean, in most cases, you can't kill mobs through sanguine unless like lust and pride are up or something like that. Just normal DPS uh, is usually balanced out by the rate of Sanguine healing and how much health they have. It's really hard to kill something through a Sanguine, so we're kind of lucky there. Uh, the group doesn't quite follow me here. This is where I wish I was on voice comms again. Um, I used to go to the, to the right, but after watching enough pugs die along the way, I do this left route now, and it is faster. Oh, I think I stopped doing my meta avatar transformation, sorry. It's new. It's like a whole extra video game <laughs> to be able to tell I'm in meta and I have other things I want to do too. So I'm not, I'm still working on this whole uh, VTube situation. Anyway, we're going to do a little bit of sigil pulling here. Uh, I, I chain sigiled them back there just to pull them back. It's basically like Demon Hunter, uh, Ursul's Vortex, right? There's Spear of Bastion into a lot of Sanguine, which is questionable, but they killed them. So lovely. So, not much to say about this fight, except there is something to say about this fight. So, in meta, sorry about that. So, let's talk about this. Ideally, what happens is you're setting up for phase two. And so what happens is Imperial Ordinance. Everyone gets an arrow. All the arrows are where he's going to drop these bombs, right? These bombs come out of the air and they'll leave orbs. You want to put all the orbs in one place. So I'm seeing three pools. So this is what I call a pug fail, right? This is a pug fail. This is going to make this harder to heal. And we'll, we'll look at that in a second. That dude need to run it a long way earlier than that. Wait, just start running. Okay. Most people are stacked. We see two jokers in the background. That was, well, who was that? The hunter and who's ever running over now? The paladin, the jokers supposed to stand on the tank and so what should be what should happen when you do this right in higher keys it's really more of an issue in 11 it's you know pretty lol face tank this stuff but um or face roll like what mechanics uh try this on tyrannical it's a it's a different spice people will be like why did i die on this boss like what's going on like the healer sucks There's, it's, it's like no no you did it wrong you did it wrong there's no fight in this in shadowlands where there isn't some pretty crucial boss mechanic, right? So here's the issue. I told the hunter to go turtle the ones on the right and I'm gonna get the ones on the left. We are losing massive DPS right now, which isn't a problem on an 11, but ideally as demon hunter, I can take all the orbs or a paladin can take all the orbs and bubble it. We don't want our hunter to have to stop DPSing. So that's a big DPS loss. Now, the, the DPS in this group is over the limit of what an 11 takes. So we're over DPSing this dungeon and that's what allows us to get through this. But if you're at DPS level, like you're just barely gonna kill it on like a 15, 16, 17, you have to do that mechanic correctly. Okay, so we've killed the boss here. 
but that was not a great run. Uh, not well executed by the group at all. Again, at a 10 and 11 and probably 12, it's not a big deal, right? We're still timing it and everyone's probably like, yep, we did it, I know this dungeon, but they don't, they really don't. That's, that's like a four out of 10, five out of 10 execution. They get some points for actually clearing it and no one dying, but not good, um, not optimal, right? It's such a simple boss, right? It's pretty much a tank and spank, except for the orb stacking phase, right? And there's guaranteed always one uh, orb stacking phase, even on a fortified, if you had lust for it, etc. Just, just not good though, right? So that could be much cleaned up. Um, there's only so much I can say uh, as a tank. They kind of either know it or they don't, right? And I can either give them the positioning that will allow them to do that, or I can't, you know? Uh, in most cases, there's nothing that would stop it, but every once in a while, uh, if I'm standing in the wrong place, the orbs end up somewhere funny. So another thing uh, for this angel phase on the higher keys, which I pointed out in my 15 times video, is that getting hit by the black lions is probably half your health. And so say if you get hit by two back to back, you will just die, especially a cloth ape. So I wish the cameras weren't so messed up in this part. Like, why can't I see off the side, right? It's like there's this invisible wall here. It makes it tough, right? I'm in a bad place and I'm getting hit by the spears. It's not great. Now, what I will say is that the one thing that DPS can do, especially in a ranged comp, is that, guess what? There's a repeatable mechanic here. That mechanic is that the spear is going to go towards one of the players. In that case, it went to me. I got hit by it, but I flew back on because I'm a demon hunter. Pretty awesome. Um, if you fall off, however, you're just going to spin around in a circle. You can pick up a spear if you want, and you'll just come back on the platform. You don't die. It's actually like an achievement to go jump off and get the spear, etc, etc. The tank shouldn't do it, but if you fall off, it's not the worst. But anyway, the mechanic here is that all the deep, all the rain should stack like on the side somewhere and bait the spears. We have a lot of melee, so it's almost inevitable that one's gonna end up like right next to her like that. So kind of unfortunate, but the range players should be kind of staying next to each other and then off to the side. Uh, no one ever does that though. Only in like super high O groups are we gonna actually, you know, look to actually do the mechanics of the angels. Most people just stand wherever and just, you know, take it for what it is. Um, when I do KSM, when I do 15 or higher of Spire's Ascension on pretty much any of my tanks, actually, uh, I'll probably do my own groups in a lot of cases and, and or when I come into the pug, I'm going to say Discord or I'm leaving, right? Not in a jerk way. I'm just like, hey, I use Discord if you don't want to do Discord, right? Uh, they don't have to talk, but they have to listen. If they don't want to do Discord, I'm like, that's fine. I'm just going to run, right? No big deal. However, what I find for like the high IO groups, like if I'm pugging into a 16 or something in my Protection Paladin, no one's mad at Discord. No one's mad at the tank knowing that, like it wanting Discord, because it means the tank's going to tell you something. It means that they're willing to lead. They're willing to like actually lead you through mechanics, talk about utility timings, talk about cooldown timings. And those are the things that, guess what? Time the higher keys. So no one's... I haven't had any high IO group be mad at Discord, right? They may not want to talk, but most of the times they're happy to listen. So luckily we uh, did that correctly. Huge downtime after Pride, or after Second Angel into Pride. And now we're going to, um, we also lusted, which is really good. They listened. Thank you, Hunter, in that case. And um, pretty smooth third angel. However, what's going on right now is that we're um, going to basically ignore a pretty important mechanic. And I'll talk about that here. I don't do a great job of it either, but I'll, I'll, I'll kind of talk through what's happening, right? So partially my fault, the Warlock got hit. That's avoidable damage. It's Grievous. Bad Warlock. Just move, right? So I dropped that black circle in a bad place. So. Not good on my part. I'm going to go get the orb. And so what's at play here is that these black circles, they have a dot, right? When you when you walk through them, you're going to get a dot. So I'm kind of taking too many here, but I'm expecting people to get this spear to me like 10 minutes ago. 
So the Warlock is doing good by not hitting the um, circles. However, they took too long, so everyone else got hit by the circles. And so what happens is this dot becomes unhealable with Grievous. So you're looking at the Paladins like, well, I'm going to save the tank and I'm going to save myself. And everyone else is going to die. So that's that phase, right? Everyone else should not get hit by any dots, right? I got hit by that charge. I was in fell devastation. I'm not showing it on the avatar at the moment. I was in fell devastation. I battle res the hunter. The hunter does not accept it. I'm pretty sure that cast finished and I'm looking at the hunter. I'm like, what are you doing? Again, warrior get, gets hit by the frontal. Big damage, right? When I got hit, it was like 10% of my health. Again, I battle res the hunter and he finally takes it. I don't, I'm pretty sure he just didn't, he was just sitting there. The warlock is calling for a wipe and I'm like, I'm not wiping this. I'm too bored of this dungeon and you guys not knowing what you're doing to do this again with you. Again, remember, partially this is my third run of Spires of Ascension and I'm like, I really don't want to deplete another one. So I go for the engineering battle res, which I spent all day getting alchemy and uh, not all day, but getting, you know, the morning, getting alchemy, getting engineering to the top level. So I have that here. That engineering battle res saves the key, by the way. We would not have timed this. And so all I want to put out there is that DPS don't stand in the black circles on Grievous. I mean, don't stand on Tyrannical either. It's unnecessary damage. And you're like, why am I dying? Why is this healer so bad? You probably don't have Vidu or any debuff trackers. You're probably sitting at like nine stacks of the circle debuff. Now I'm going to take a bunch of them because I'm just waiting for the spear, right? So I'll eat a couple of them. I'm a tank. I have a little bit more health, a little bit more mitigation. Everyone else needs to try really, really hard not to get uh, in those black circles, especially on Grievous, especially on Tyrannical. So Hunter's dead. Warlock is dead. Uh, it's, it's a bad group, right? Uh, all my Spires groups have been pretty tragic and garbage. This is pretty tragic and garbage too, right? Imagine dying on this boss. I have, it's, it's so rare that I haven't had any runs to record to show it, to have to even discuss the mechanics of this boss, but there you go. Two people dying on the third boss or the last boss of Spires, like the easiest boss in the game possibly. Uh, pretty sad. But anyway, enough trash talking this group uh, and all the groups of Spires of Ascension this week. You're all garbage. I'm sorry. You're all terrible. <laughs> However, we did barely get this one. Um, this pug carried by me, carried by that engineering battle res. People kind of did their parts, not the best at all. And um, I'd like to forget that this week of Spires of Ascension even happened, to be absolutely honest. But there's Spectral Sight. Um, there's me starting to understand Imprison, Glaive, Elysian, Fell Devastation, that's kind of the opener now. And um, getting a lot more comfortable with the Demon Hunter at the, not higher keys, but the Pride keys at this point. And I'll be sharing my routes and my tactics and my pull timings, etc. for all the keys as I slowly make my way up to all 15s. I'm probably not going to show every key along the way like I did on the Prop Paladin, but any kind of interesting ones and definitely all the 15s I will. So thanks so much for watching and I'll check you on the next video on the Vengeance Demon Hunter. I've been doing a little bit of PvP and it's a really easy way to get weapons so I'll show just a little bit of that too. Peace.